Good morning. After such a formal introduction, I guess I should say thank you, Mr. Siri. So uh, we're happy to be with you today. Um, going home. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. How about you? And uh, it's hard to believe that this campus was home just 40 years ago, four decades ago, almost half a century ago, it seems. And uh, when they gave me uh, my tag and it had this green ribbon on it, I asked if maybe gray might be better, you know, to match the hair a little more or something. And I've been contemplating why it was green because they said the green is the right color. So all I could figure out is, is that because of something about being put out to pasture or something like that. But uh, anyway, it's evident the seasons have come and gone. Buildings have come and gone on this campus. Students have come and gone. Teachers have come and gone. Even the name has come and gone. And uh, it has changed over the year. But this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. The world as you see it today is not the world that God intended for you to live in. It is very different. God created things and he wanted a different order of things for his creation. If you were to wake up in God's creation as he intended it to be, you would feel no anxiety. And I believe we would all be morning people. But you would wake up with no anxiety, no depression, no fear, no pain, no sense of loss or dread, only hope and peace, alertness, anticipation of a great another day of adventure with God and feeling his love. But you and I live in a very different world today. It is very different. Our days start with alarm clocks, kids panicking, where's my book? I'm going to be late for school. Traffic on the highways, crowded planes, trains, and buses. Some things that happen are good. Some things that happen are not so good. You get a new job. You think you have success. Your picture is on the front of a national magazine, man or woman of the year. And then the next few days, the boss says, I need a meeting with you right now. And you lose your job, you lose your car, you lose your house, you lose your health. A phone call comes in and a brother or a sister, a mother or father or a friend, they're dying. This is not the world that God intended. It was never intended for you to experience such things. God created a perfect world and sin changed all that. But God wants to make your feet like the feet of a deer. God wants to make your feet like the feet of a deer. Not just any deer, the deer that is we're talking about here in the Bible. The, uh, uh, in some versions it calls it a hind. The hind deer, a small red deer that lives in the mountains. It, is, it lives in some of the most rugged country in the world with, with uh, cliffs uh, going one way and walls of rock the other way. And, and it just is, just you'd say, why would anyone want to live there? But the hind lives there. And God wants to make your feet like the feet of a deer. Now let's talk about Habakkuk. Turn your Bibles open and uh, you go. And, and whether your, your, your Bible looks like this, you know, I'm a little old-fashioned, or if you have that kind of electric thing on your phone, go to Habakkuk chapter 1. There are three chapters here in Habakkuk, and we're going to spend a little bit of time in each of these chapters. Because, interestingly, the th things that we're talking about here we see that Habakkuk begins by complaining to God. 
he complains that there's violence all around and God doesn't seem to care. Do you ever feel like Habakkuk? You don't understand what's going on? And you feel like you need to complain to God about the evil in the world around you? Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 2. How long, O Lord, will I call for help and you will not hear? I cry out to you, violence, yet you do not save. Why do you make me to see iniquity and cause me to look at, on wickedness? Yes, destruction and violence are before me. Strife exists and contention arises. Therefore, the law is ignored and justice is never upheld. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, justice comes out perverted. These words were written long ago, but Habakkuk could have been writing about 2022, couldn't he? Wow. Wow. And God does give him sort of an answer, but I don't think you're going to like the answer. Because what God says is it's going to get worse. Verse 6, for behold, I'm raising up the, the Chaldeans, that fierce and impetuous people who march throughout the earth to seize dwelling places that are not there. And what does Habakkuk do? He's in this conversation with God. And he's asking God, why are you, all these things happening? And God says, Habakkuk, it's going to get worse. And so what Habakkuk does is he begins to complain more to God, trying to reason with God. God, you're too good to allow this to happen. And so in verse 13, he says, your eyes are too pure to approve evil, and you cannot look on wickedness with favor. Why do you look with favor on those who deal treacherously? Why are you silent when the wicked swallow up those more righteous than they? You know, if you think about it a little bit in, in the Bible, if you took all the complaints out of the Bible, it would be a pretty small book, wouldn't it? The book of Job is one big complaint. Why am I persecuted? Many of the Psalms are about complaints of why the wicked prosper. <laughs> Many of the prophets complain why bad things happen to God's people. The book of Numbers wouldn't exist of all, at all if it wasn't the Israelites who complained so much in the desert. And then here we are with Habakkuk. Lord, I've just been wondering what is going on in this world. Why is there so much evil and it seems that you don't take any notice at all? So in chapter 2, Habakkuk sits back and he's going to listen to see what the Lord says. And we're going to start seeing some really good things here in chapter 2. So go with me to chapter 2 and we're going to start with verse 2. The Lord answered me and said, record the vision and inscribe it on tablets that the one who reads it may run for the vision is not is the vision is yet for the appointed time it hastens towards the goal and it will not fail though it tarries wait for it it will certainly come it will not delay there's a lot of good news in those two verses a lot of good news because god is saying it's going towards a goal and that means it's God's goal that's going towards. And he says that I am in charge. And he says I do have a plan. That's the God that we serve. And what God is saying here in this verse is he wants to make your feet like the feet of a deer. He wants to make your feet like a feet, feet of the deer. Now the last uh, thing that we want to look at the last cha part chapter chapter 3 we see that this here in the very last words of this book it says for the choir director on my stringed instruments where did that come from you know we had a lot of good music here last last evening and this morning that's because the third chapter Habakkuk is a psalm 
You know, scholars looking at this, they said uh, often, there are some scholars that I don't think they were right, but they said, uh, chapter 1 and 2, that was probably written by Habakkuk, and then somebody stuck this psalm on the end of it. And I don't believe that's true. I think what we have is a picture of Habakkuk, who is doing something here very exciting. He, you, uh, just imagine Habakkuk. He's a prophet. He's in the marketplace of the town where he lives, and he gets up on top maybe a, of a rock that's around the well or something, and he's looking out, he's drawing the crowd around him, and he starts preaching. And he preaches through what we know as chapter 1. And then he preaches through what we know as chapter 2. And then he gets to what we know as chapter 3, and he starts singing. What an amazing thing we have here. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. Can you imagine what kind of a sermon that Habakkuk preached that day? Chapter 1, chapter 2. In chapter 3. And God wants to make your feet like the feet of a deer. We are on rocky mountain cliffs, and on one side is a cliff that goes way down, and we're out of side is the rocks that go up, and everywhere we look, there's things wanting to stumble us. The winds are blowing and howling around us, and we live in this dangerous life where there's betrayals and tragedies and pain and God wants your feet to be like the feet of a deer. God says it right here. We are not alone. The world is one where God acts even as evil swirls around us. God is active in your life and he has a plan. Habakkuk 3 Verse 10. And remember, he, Habakkuk's singing these words. I'm not going to sing it. I don't know the tune. They didn't translate that across. So we're just going to read. The mountains saw you and quake. The downpour of water swept by. The deep uttered forth its voice. It lifted high its hands. Sun and moon stood in their places. They went away at the light of your arrows, at the radiance of your gleaming spear. In indignation, you marched through the earth. In anger, you trampled the nations. You went forth for the salvation of your people, for the salvation of your anointed. God is active in our world today. He is there. He is active. You know, a question I'm often that was asked as a pastor why do we go through so much on this earth when we have an all-powerful God? Why do Christians suffer? Why not only prosperity and wealth for us all? Where is God when someone we love dies? I have a pastor friend who tells a story, and he related to me that he was meeting with a family who had just lost a son. A young son. And the family asked, where was God when my son died? And I think God gave the pastor an answer because he's, he said, the same place God was when his own son died, very close. Very close. Now we'll be back to Habakkuk, so you may want to put uh, a marker in there. But let's go over to 1 Peter chapter 4 because we're trying to understand a little more about what this is all about. 1 Peter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, 
you may be glad with exceeding joy. That helps us understand a little bit, doesn't it? We will go through, but we can be partakers of Christ's suffering. Let's go to the book of James, chapter 1. And there's a verse there that I had a... I have a hard time understanding, even today. It just kind of messes with my mind because James says something there that's hard for me to understand. And here's what he says in verse 2. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. I just spent two hours planting beautiful flowers in my yard and the neighbor's dog dug them up. I'm so happy. Whoa, 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 they're backing up. Oh, bang, into my car. Big dent in it. I'm so glad. I'm so cheerful. I'm pounding nails and I hit the wrong nail. Oh, I'm so full of joy. A little tough. But he says here, James, consider it all joy, my brother, when you encounter trials. It's kind of like Murphy's Law. Do you think Murphy's Law is following you around all the time? You understand Murphy's Law? It's kind of caught on and it comes out in different ways. And, but the, the, the one rendition is, smile because tomorrow will be worse. Yeah. Kids ever ask you the why question? It's coming, Tony. The why question. Why do I have to go to bed now? Why do I have to go to school? Why did my friend break my toy? Why is the grass green? Why is the sky blue? Why, 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 why? And as my kids were asking all those questions, my my best answer I could come up with was, because. Because what? Just because. And God does not answer Habakkuk's why question. God simply asks Habakkuk, to tell what will happen, and then God shares his plan to be with him always and to be with us always. God's plan is to make your feet like the feet of a deer. So Habakkuk says, I I don't understand, but I will trust. Habakkuk 3.17 Though the fig tree should not blossom, and though there be no fruit on the vines, though the yield of the olive should fail, and the fields produce no food, though the flock should be cut off from the fold, and there be no cattle in the stalls, yet I will exult in the Lord. I will rejoice in God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He's made my feet like the feet of a deer and makes me to walk on my high places. I understand that there was a scientist one time who wanted to know what this was all about. And so he said, well, the best thing to do is go up and observe these deer and see what, what, this, what he's talking about. Wanting our feet to be like the feet of a deer? And so as he watched, he saw them just scampering and just bouncing around the mountainside and up the sides of rocks and down and, and no problem at all. And what he observed was that Every motion was consistency with this animal, and it was so sure-footed because its back, you could see where its front feet should go, and its back feet every time would land where that back feet was. That front foot, he knows that's a good place to put its foot. He knows that's a good place of foot, and so the back foot comes, boom, boom. He just works, and off he goes, running across the mountainside. Now, you only have two feet, not four, so how can this apply to you? how God will lead your footsteps. What we need to do is to look to see where God has placed his feet and make sure we put our feet right there. Follow the Lord. Follow the Lord. Up over the mountains, through those terrible storms, everything. Follow the Lord. Have you ever wondered how God acts when his children call? Go with me to Psalms 18. Psalms 18. And there in Psalms 18, verse 4, 
It says there, the cords of death encompass me and the torrents of ungodliness terrified me. The cords of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called unto the Lord and cried up to my God. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry for help before he came, came into his ears. And then it tells us what God, how God reacts. Then the earth shook and quaked and the fountains and the mountains were trembling and were shaken because he was angry. Smoke went up out of his nostrils and fire from his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down with thick darkness under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and flew and he sped upon the wings of the wind. God acts as he always does in the real world. His world, he makes your feet like the feet of a deer. And this passage, Psalms 1833, is where it goes down. And in Psalms 1833, it says, He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me upon my high places. Does this world that you live in, does it bother you? Are you stressed and distressed? Let God guide your feet. Let God guide your feet. Let him make your feet like the feet of a deer. Sure on the mountain, sure in the storms, sure on the edge of the cliffs, sure in the life, and sure in the kingdom to come. Not removed from the world, but guided through according to God's plan for you. We at this homecoming are headed home. And that home is not on this earth, but in heaven above. It is a Bible promise. He will make your feet like the feet of a deer. He's only waiting for you to surrender your life to him, to get your mind focused on him so that you will be able to communicate with him and he will show you where to place your feet. See where God places his feet and place yours precisely in his steps.